My name is Art Pedroza, and I'll be chairing tonight at the request of our usual chairperson, Ophelia, who had a calendar conflict. She couldn't figure out how to be in two places at once. So we're calling the meeting to order. I'm going to ask our board secretary to please conduct our roll call at this time. Make sure your microphones are on when you introduce yourselves. Thank you, Commissioner. Wilson? We have an equipment malfunction. We're checking on the equipment. No. Come back with you. That's home. It's not working. If we can't get these online, we'll have to use our laptop. We'll have a yell. My apologies to our library contingents. Yeah, exactly. Yes. The voice you would use when directing your children at home. <laughs> Not working? Testing one, two. Testing one, one. Uh, All right. We'll just can we call somebody? talk loud. Are you okay? Um, are you recording? Yes. Okay. All right. Very good. We're going to continue. Um, thank you, Commissioner. Chairperson Ophelia Velarde Garcia. Citywide Representative Irma Macias. Present. Ward 1 Representative Humberto Sanchez. Ward 2 Representative Angie Gomez. Ward 3 Representative Luis Aleman. Ward 4 Representative Yanni Diaz. Present. Ward 6 Representative R. Pedrosa. Present. Garden Grove Unified School District Representative Felipe Guerrero. Present. We have a quorum. Yes. Everyone, Everyone please rise, stand. please stand. Put your right hand over your heart. Ready? Mm -hmm. Begin. I uh, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you, everyone. You may have a seat. We're going to start with our introductions, and we'll start with Felipe there in the back. If you have any uh, any comments you'd like to make, you can start. Making no, them. not at this point. Okay, I've just been told that we're going to skip the introductions, so we're good. Um, so we're going to write ready to consent. Correct. All right, so we're going to go into the consent calendar. If you could please uh, review the minutes from the last meeting, if you haven't done so already. And when you're ready, I would accept a motion to approve or any motions to make any changes to the minutes. We have a motion to approve. Okay, motion to approve. We have a motion. To second. Have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the minutes are approved. Oh, uh, yes. Do you want to review the absences? Oh, yes. Review the absences. Would the board secretary come out of that? Yes. Mr. Secretary. That wasn't me. Mr. Secretary, uh, can we review the absences uh, that were excused for this meeting? Yes, sir. Uh, absences excused are Ophelia Velarde Garcia with a previous engagement and Ward 1 Representative Humberto Sanchez with a uh, family vacation. Ah, oh, mine's coming up in July. Thank you very much. All right. It appears that we are now on the new business section of tonight's program. Item number one, we've been asked by the city clerk, hey, hey, wow, that makes a difference. We've been asked by the city clerk to elect for the fiscal year 2019-20 a chair and vice chair for this board of recreation and parks. 
Uh, while Ophelia and uh, Luis are not here, they can certainly be considered for those uh, positions. So at this time, I would entertain uh, nominations for chair and vice chair. If you'd like to take a few minutes and ponder this. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, we will open up the floor first for nominations for the vice, per, uh, vice chair. Thank you very much. So we're going to start with vice chair, and then we'll move on to chair. Move to um, approve the position for our chair. Uh, hopefully, um, Ms. Ophelia Velarde. She's the chair right now. So, so, so commissioners, that is correct. She's the chairperson at the moment. However, um, Commissioner uh, Pedrosa has opened up the floor for the vice chair. So oh, we, we haven't had a vice chair in quite some time. So uh, the board can nominate um, somebody for the vice chair's position uh, at this point in time. And then we would just have to have a, a motion for that. I would like to nominate Angie for vice chair if she's interested. Any additional nominations for vice chair at this time? You will close the nomination. Okay, we're going to close the nominations for the vice chair. Do we need a motion for the nomination on the floor? Okay, I'd like to accept at this time a motion to approve the nomination of Angie Gomez as our vice chair for the fiscal year 2019-2020. Would someone like to make that motion? Move to approve the motion to accept Okay, Emma is making the motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That was easy. At this time, we'll accept nominations for chair. And even though Ophelia is not here, we can certainly nominate her. Yes, so, so the uh, nomination for the vice chair carries over. Uh, does Commissioner Angie Gomez accept the uh, position of vice chair? Yes, I do. Excellent. So now uh, the floor is now open for the chairperson. And at this moment, you follow the same protocol. You can nominate, um, and you're correct. Even if uh, Ophelia is not here, she can be nominated. Well, I think that we can continue, though. So I move forward to accept um, Ophelia as a president or... Um, continue being our chair. Very good. We have a nomination on the floor for Ophelia to serve as chair again. Do we have any additional nominations to I consider? I second that. We have a, so we have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, I'm sorry, Commissioner. Uh, th that is a second nomination for Ophelia. Ophelia. Before we close it, we need to see if there's another one. That, is there another. any other interest in anyone else serving as chair? Don't be shy. You can nominate yourself. So we'll close the nominations then, and I'll accept the motion for Ophelia to serve as our chair again, and that's what she gets for not being here. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a motion, Irma? Motion to approve uh, Ophelia as our new. And do we have a second? Second. Wonderful. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we'll close the nominations and the voting. All right, what's next? Ah, so... Normally, at this point, I believe we would go into the uh, informational items. However, I would entertain uh, approval from the board to move up the public comments at this time so the members of the public can comment and then they are welcome to stay or they can go home to their families. I see. Okay. So there are several people here who have submitted um, requests to speak on item two. So we'll get to that in a moment. Item two, is this one here? We should probably do that one first. Okay. All right, so we're, since item two is the next one on the item, this uh, has to do with um, a recommendation uh, for naming the new park at Six and Lacey, the Parque Mariposa, which I believe uh, translates as the Butterfly Park. And we have a number of speakers, so would we have the speakers? Uh, yes, let me just give just a little brief overview. Okay, um, we'll get an overview here. Okay, up on the uh, uh, screen you have the, the new park that's under construction at the uh, corner of 6th and Lacey. And that's where we had the uh, groundbreaking, absolutely, by Garfield School. And so um, I received a letter from 
Vila, the Kennedy, Ken, uh, Kennedy Commission, Latino Health Access, and Santa Ana Building Healthier Communities uh, in a proposal to name the park. And so the municipal code says that the um, planning commission will make the determination and then it goes to uh, the city council. And so we wanted to um, bring it to you all because um, you're in parks and recreation. This is one of our parks. And so we want to make sure we come to you first. Um, there are a number of speakers um, that have been involved uh, in this park for a long time. And they would like to... Um, propose uh, renaming this park. I really don't want to call it Sixth and Lacey. Uh, we, we should have a park name. So um, uh, the uh, chair, as soon as, as soon as he gets debriefed here, uh, we can call up all the speakers and um, uh, you may talk about the park. Cool. Yes, I agree. The, the current name sounds kind of Google mappy. So I'm going to call the uh, members of the public uh, in the order that I have the request here. And I'd like to remind you that you can approach the microphone that you see there. And you have a total of up to three minutes each to uh, speak about your thoughts about this park. So number one, Concepcion Rodriguez with the organization that says here, Vela. I don't know why that happened, but I'm sorry. I apologize. Well, good evening, board members. My name is Concepcion Rodriguez, and I'm a resident of the um, Vecindario Lacey in Acción. And I'm here to ask you for your support on naming the park Mariposa. And you might ask, why? Why Mariposa? Well, as we all know, uh, butterflies represent migration, and it's very symbolic for us as immigrant families. So when, I forgot your name, I'm sorry. You, Ron, Ron okay. presented the, um, the picture of the park of how it was gonna look. We look at the butterfly and we love the butterfly most of everything in the park. I mean, we all love that, but the butterfly was very, um, for me personally, very um, symbolic. So that's why I'm here to ask you for your support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Up next, holy smokes, let's see. <laughs> okay, Sari, I think it says, uh, for Latino Health Access. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Saraí, soy parte de Latino Hot Access. El día de hoy queremos reconocer el enorme trabajo y activismo que los residentes del vecindario Lacey han tenido para poder crear un parque más en el área 92701. Latino Hot Access ha estado acompañando al vecindario Lacey por 15 años en mejorar las condiciones de los vecindarios y animándolos a la participación activamente. Por tal razón y honrando los esfuerzos de los residentes que viven en esa área, y que han estado trabajando en mejorar los determinantes sociales de sus vecindarios en colaboración con Vela, Kennedy Commission y Comunidades Saludables, Latino Health Access apoya la recomendación colectiva del nombre Parque Mariposa, ya que una de las formas de trabajo sustentable para que un proyecto y espacio perdure y permanezca es que los residentes del área se adueñen de los proyectos para cuidar, protegerlos en el bien común. Gracias. Uh, she's going to translate for us. Yeah, so let me try. Uh, mi nombre es Sarayel, pero soy parte... Oh. <laughs> I can't even tell the difference anymore. Okay. <laughs> my bad. We're... It's okay. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sarayel, pero um, I'm part of Latino Health Access. Today, I want uh, we want to recognize the enormous uh, work and activism that the residents of the neighborhood Lacey had being able to bring this park uh, to the area here in 92701. Latino Health Access has been um, accompanying the neighborhood, Lacey neighborhood for the past 15 years and trying to improve the condition, living conditions uh, in the neighborhood and um, encourage them to get actively participate in their community. For that reason, I want to honor the efforts uh, of these residents that live in this area and that have been working really hard to um, improve the social determinants of their neighborhood 
in collaboration with Vela Community Commission and Sanana Building Healthy Communities. Uh, Latino Health Access um, supports the, recon the collective recommendation to name the park Parque Mariposa since it is um, okay. Since it is a, a way to maintain, to produce sustainable work and keep this project um, a space that, just give me one moment, that, uh, that is truly for the residents of this area and one that they can really gain um, ownership of and that um, protects the common well being. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Our next speaker is uh, Idalia Rios from Vela. Um, <laughs> well, first of all, I want to say thank you for bringing up this item um, today. And this effort, it has been a, a more than a t 10 years of advocacy from the community. Uh, Bella has been advocating for the last um, years for the funding of this park. And by naming uh, Parque Mariposa, uh, like my compañera said, uh, the butterfly symbolizes migrant, uh, migrant, and it also symbolizes liberty, and it also, the winds can give us um, lots of hope, right? Uh, so um, I really, want to put in, in your minds, hearts, that think about the community, think about the kids, think about um, butterflies, and and always, um, it, it'll be very meaningful to us if you consider that name. So um, I'm just going to say that think about it, and we're looking forward to, to for the inauguration for Mar Mar Parque Mariposa in September. Or, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, our final speaker, Cynthia from the Kennedy Commission. Hi, good afternoon, uh, commissioners. Um, as you discussed today, uh, what to name the park, I want to urge you to name the park Parque Mariposa, as all the other people have previously stated. Uh, the residents of the neighborhood have been working really hard um, in advocating for a park in this area for years. Um, and they have been deeply involved in the design of the park. Um, as others mentioned, in April 2017, there was a meeting in which 70 uh, residents attended, and they were giving their input on what the community's needs were and what they wanted for this park, uh, but something that caught their attention was um, this big butterfly that was in the design, right? And it was because of what it symbolizes for this community. So it doesn't only symbolize you know, the transformation that this neighborhood is undergoing and trying to improve the quality of life, but they're also uh, as others have mentioned, a big symbol in the immigrant community, and many in this uh, in Lynn Lacey neighborhood have ties to the immigrant community, either as immigrants themselves, uh, as daughters and, and, and sons or whatever of, of immigrants. So um, for those reasons, uh, we would urge you all to, to name the park Parque Mariposa because it would honor the work that the residents in that area have put into this. I also want to state there were uh, two other people, two or three other people who wanted to make comments, but uh, we ran out of speaking cards. So I don't know if they can come up, if that's okay. Uh, sure. Yeah. Thank you. If they could just introduce themselves when they come to the microphone. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ruben Barreto. Uh, I am with Santana Building Healthy Communities. And just, I don't know if I'm too close or too, too far. <laughs> but uh, how does it sound? Welcome to Six and Lacey Park. Or welcome to Parque Mariposa. Bienvenido a Parque Mariposa. So just how that can connect to Santana, how does that connect to the residents, how does that connect to the work that was put into it by those residents that live in that neighborhood. Um, building other communities uh, focuses a lot on, on leadership and uh, ownership and making sure that they're in the forefront of the work that's happening. And what better way for you to show that than for um, allowing the residents who put in that work to be able to name the park that they so um, uh, want to see be, be a reality coming up really soon. So we really appreciate that and hope you take this re request. Thank you. Thank you. And I believe there was one additional speaker, maybe? Two. Uh, hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Maricela uh, Castro. Uh, yo pertenezco al Grupo Vela, vecindario Lexi en Acción. Y quiero agradecer que hayan puesto en consideración el nombre para el Parque Mariposa. Eh, 
por el símbolo que significa y, y que tiene la comunidad. El Grupo Vela ha participado en abogar para los fondos um, faltantes y para el grupo y la comunidad migrante. Ese parque simboliza paz y eso queremos para nuestra ciudad. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Um, so I want to thank uh, that you have um, included as a consideration putting the name Parque Mariposa um, because this is a symbol that is significant. Uh, sorry. Because of what it symbolizes and what it means, uh, the meaning that it has for our community here in Lacey. The uh, grupo, the community group Vela has participated in advocating for the funds that were necessary to uh, To, uh, to construct the park, um, and also in advocating for um, other, for the community and for the migrant community. Um, this park symbolizes peace, um, and that is what we want for our community and for our city. Thank you. Hello, my name is Veronica Juarez. I'm from um, Lacey neighborhood, and I'm also a current active member from Um, group Bella, which is mean um, neighborhood in action, and we've been doing a lot of volunteer work. That means we don't get paid for that. And so I'm just requesting you to take into consideration to name it um, Parque Mariposa, because not only, as our, my partner had said, the meaning of it, but also, um, or in addition to what you just heard, it also means uh, metamorphosis which means that we've been doing a lot of work and we can improve our neighborhood. So that's in addition to what my partner had said. So please take into consideration. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anyone else? My understanding is that there have not been any other uh, submissions from the public for main considerations. At this time, I would consider comments from the board members. And we can start with uh, Felipe, if he'd like to make any comments about this proposal. Um, I say they go ahead and get it. It sounds really nice. She explained about the metamorphosis. Is that the way you say it? Metamorphosis? Well, metamorphosis. And uh, I say uh, I approve. Thank you. Irma? Irma Macias. Um, I think it is a wonderful name. I'm from Michoacán. So Mariposas, I think, is one of the, the migrations that That's right. every year, even though the, uh, there is other the migration of animals, but I think Mariposa for its beauty and its beauty that we need in our neighborhood. So looking forward to um, be named uh, Mariposa. I think it's a perfect name. Thanks, Commissioner Diaz. Um, as the community has mentioned and the work that folks have done for the for several years, I believe someone said it was about 10 years in the making, um, I completely support the, the name. And I've read the documents that it is under the design and historical development that that is an appropriate name because I also wanted to double check, right, is would it fit within um, the requirements? So if that's correct, I completely support this. And it's a beautiful name that is very endearing to folks that, like myself, that have um, immigrated to the United States. Commissioner Gomez, um, first, lo voy a decir en español para que me entiendan todos. Este, me inspiraron, de veras, qué bonito ver los líderes y qué bonito que vengan juntos y voluntaricen y, y de veras se entreguen a su comunidad para una mejor comunidad. O sea, el nombre me encanta, me fascina. Pienso que es un nombre apropiado. Me, me, pienso que no nomás es, es algo que ustedes lo están haciendo, pero pienso que simbolica mucho para mucha gente, ¿verdad? No nomás es el neighborhood. So what I said is I really admire that they're volunteering and the contributions they made to their own community. I really, I love and adore the butterfly. I think not only does it bring hope and change and to the community, but I think for every, anybody that goes there to visit, I mean, I think it's beautiful for everyone. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I love the suggestion as well. And it's true, the butterflies don't pay attention to boundaries. They want to get from here to there, and that's exactly what they do. So I support the, uh, the change. So at this time, uh, with board, Comments at an end, I would entertain a motion for us to support the name change for uh, Parque Mariposa. Do we have a motion? A motion to move to name. Thank you so much. Do we have a second? Second. No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 There we go. Okay.
Okay, um, let me just follow up uh, with the next step. So this was a motion uh, to recommend to the Planning Commission uh, to consider this name at 6th and Lacey. So what will happen next is this will go to, um, to the Planning Commission. Um, I'll let you know when they have an agenda item to address this. I would recommend that you show up that evening uh, and uh, go from there. So I will send emails out and uh, keep this process moving. And I'd like to just go back to um, the um, criteria that has been developed in the um, Municipal Code. Um, it, it probably looks like um, the first criteria fits better for this, and I, I think I made a mistake here. <laughs> and so what the Planning Commission will do is select the appropriate criteria uh, that this uh, could fit into. So thank you very much for bringing that up. I appreciate it. So thank you all for coming also. Gracias por venir. Okay, so as we mentioned earlier, we're going to move up the public comments. So I'd like to call up to the microphone Mr. Dale Helbig, who's from my neighborhood. Good evening. I, I hope you incorporate uh, the butterfly and the design work for the sign for Mariposa because I think it, uh, it's great. Um, I'm here to talk about a couple things tonight. One was uh, uh, brought to my attention when I arrived and uh, a neighbor couldn't make it and they're concerned about the opening of uh, the park access along Lincoln to Santiago Park. Uh, they didn't find out about it until after uh, Lisa's staff came out to our community and I think someone dropped off a flyer to their house and they're actually the first house on the Lincoln Street that will be impacted by this. Uh, I think you guys notified the people on Lincoln that had their back property uh, adjacent to the path but not the houses along Lincoln and they're concerned about uh, the homeless transient population coming up and down Lincoln as a result of this and uh, gaining access uh, to their section of uh, Lincoln Street all the way down to 17th and everything. So they're, they, they just want you guys to take another look at it, look at what the homeless condition will be like along Lincoln if this access is opened up. It looks nice on design for opening up and, and maybe it's just not the right time to do it until we resolve the homeless issue in Santiago Park. Uh, the other thing I wanted to bring up was uh, uh, there's a lot of work going on in, in your department for the planning of the upgrade to Santiago Park and we really appreciate that. It's been long overdue. Uh, a tremendous amount of the sycamore trees and eucalyptus, eucalyptus trees uh -huh. have been cut down over the last uh, year or so due to disease and everything else and it really looks barren. So looking forward to getting the trees replanted there. And uh, one thing that uh, I noticed uh, when I went over to the OC Streetcar open house on, on Saturday, there's a sign that says uh, Tree City USA, 19 years. And I think we take pride in the trees that are in Santa Ana, so getting these trees replanted in a, in a natural park I think is very important. Along the same line, you know, there's a, a development going on up there that they want to close down the entrance to Santiago Park and route their uh, access through private property and provide easements on it. And I just don't think that's the right thing to do. I think the park needs to have its own entry point from Main Street into uh, the park with all the work that you guys are putting into to uh, make sure there's ADA access and everything else. It will be utilized a lot more once it's improved upon. Uh, the other thing is that same project will require the removal of two to three of the 100-year-old palm trees along Edgewood. And here we are at Tree City, and we're taking out trees that have, are of historical nature. Uh, I provided a picture to uh, the historical library it was taken back in 1928 that shows those palm trees there. Wow. And uh, to remove them, I think, would be uh, a crime. So thanks. Thank you, Dale. And I believe uh, Mr. Ono, when he talks as part of the next item, is probably going to cover some of those uh, items. So you're welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. Uh, so I believe we're moving on to the reports. Yes, um, we have a few things happening in our department, all good. 
Um, I've uh, listed um, a few things that include there is a there was a trust for public land uh, park score index that Santa Ana receives, and each year. Um, that is based on certain criteria, and and the bottom line is that our score was 84 out of the out, out of uh, I'm sorry, our score was 36.6 out of 100. Mm -hmm. So um, we just need to. I sent an email to the to the city manager, and as we we're going through the budget process, we need to do better with our parks and our facilities, and offer things to the community. Um, that are appropriate and we need to just pay attention and I think we're getting that attention because during the budget process we're getting additional funding uh, in our park and facility maintenance area we're getting more uh, park inspectors we're getting additional funding for our landscape contracts um, our janitorial our tree contracts and things of that nature so um, I just would like to work on upping that score in the future and we just need to make a commitment in the city uh, to our park and facility um, there's also a link there if you want to go on and see who the number one I think Washington DC is number one Irvine was number six but you can go see what um, the criteria and things of that nature so click on that link and you can go there um, we're also the next item is the park and recreation comprehensive evaluation we're having public workshops um, uh, July 8th and 9th we're having five of them and we're holding them in the morning noon and night we're inviting the community it's um, we encourage you all to be there and if you participate just remember that um, just kind of stay in the background because um, this will be brought to you and you'll be um, um, like voting on it so just you know it, I mean you're you are a community member uh, but but it will be coming back to you but feel free to come to any of these sessions um, and then at the end of this we'll be um, uh, tallying all the information um, Hiram is putting a website together um, if people cannot make the workshop we're going to put information there about what we talked about and the results uh, and so we want to keep the community updated that way as well as um, Facebook and, and things of that nature so do you know if we're going to put out a Nixle release about this in advance to kind of promote it um, yes I believe so absolutely Very and it's on the website thank you Hiram oh, thank you. Oh, look at that. Just information about. Yeah. So we'll continue uh, to add to that website. Um, and then the, the last thing is um, we're working on a land conversion project at Centennial Park that's been going on for a number of years. And so we are coming to the end of it. And um, the, the environmental report has been submitted uh, to our staff, and we're reviewing it. Uh, eventually it's going to go to the City Council uh, and then we're going to submit that to the National Park Service so um, once we have all that information we'll make a formal presentation to you um, in the uh, upcoming probably next one or two meetings the other thing I want to say is my mistake we were supposed to have a park tour last Saturday uh, and we didn't schedule that so um, we're going to be reaching out to you to um, uh, organize another one uh, and we will um, we'll reach out to you tomorrow. Um, and this time we can wear our new shirts. You can wear your new shirts, absolutely. You can wear your new shirts at the 4th of July uh, event that Jeannie will talk about here in a few minutes. A um, couple other things I'd like to talk about is that um, the uh, city um, is going to have park security at all of our parks. And so we have amended our contract with Allied Universal and in each ward of this city, um, all parks will be uh, monitored. That means they will be, they'll drive their vehicles and their vehicles will have a City of Santa Ana logo on them. Their shirts will have a City of Santa Ana logo in addition to their, their company. They will get out of their cars, they will walk the parks. Restrooms, they'll lock the restrooms at night. They will lock any gates to parking lots at night. And so it'll be a visible uh, person there uh, to help to observe and report to the police department I think this is going to make a huge difference oh also the bikeway the bike trails that the city owns in Santiago Creek that the city owns so they're going to be monitoring all of those areas um, we're just signing the contract uh, actually uh, today and they'll need about six to eight weeks to deploy uh, their um, uh, their folks and so we're looking forward to that um, I just think it's really important because 
Um, if we're going to go out and improve all these parks, we need to have some security to keep them nice and to make sure people are safe. Um, so look forward to that happening uh, soon. Um, yes. And Commissioner Diaz, is it a, gr a group of six, ten? Are folks going to be able to see visually that, that there is this security? Or is it once a day? Each, facility. Yeah, each each ward will have one uh, security guard, and they will have a vehicle, and they have an eight-hour shift. Mm -hmm. And we can we can stagger their shifts. We can, uh, you know, they can they can. I want them to close like at eleven at night, so they can close our parks at at ten, and things of that nature. So um, yeah, one per ward. Um, uh, let's see. Let me see if Ron will talk about We have a Center Street Urban Greening Project. Ron, are you going to talk about that uh, in your report? Uh, I wasn't planning on it, but I could. Okay. Um, I'll, let, um, I'll let Ron talk about that just for a few minutes. Um, also, in the French Park uh, neighborhood, um, we met, Ron and I, the city manager and council member, council member Penaloza met, and uh, there were some concerns about French Park. And so they provided some information uh, and um, amenities that they want in their park. And so we came up with a list of short-term and long-term um, uh, goals as to what we can do right now. And we've already finished some things like trimming trees and uh, what are some long-term things that we, we can do. Uh, Mr. Ono has put together a, um, a concept plan. Uh, and actually, we are going to be applying for a grant um, to potentially pay for the improvements at that park. Uh, so we went out, we talked to the community, we listened to them, and now we're going to uh, try to follow through and, and fix up French Park. Uh, there is also a lot going on with Santiago Park. Um, there are a couple grants that we are applying for, the Coastal uh, Conservation uh, Conservancy, Conservancy. There's a million dollar grant we're going to be ask, asking for for construction, and then there's another two hundred fifty thousand dollars we're going to be asking for uh, for the design. And so Ron is um, working with um, a project specialist with the uh, Coastal Conservancy. Um, he's been doing this for uh, quite a long time. They did a walkthrough, and we're very very encouraged. October seventeenth, there's going to be. Uh, a meeting up north. I don't know if it's going to be Sacramento, but um, Ron and I will be there and hopefully Councilmember Solorio uh, to support this project and, and get these funds. Um, so great work to Ron and his staff, and um, we're hoping we can bring something to the Santiago Park area. Um, another thing that's happening, I'm sorry I'm monopolizing this time. Am I okay here? Uh, uh, the sorry, the Cabrillo Tennis Center operations, um, we have a contractor. Um, they're called Match Point Tennis Academy. Their contract is expiring uh, in September, so we'll be going out with an RFP uh, just to keep you posted on that. Um, CTB3 operations, which was formerly uh, actually the library um, takes care of that. And we're going to bring it back over, and Mr. Hiram, the expert, is going to be um, helping us with the operations of CTV3. So we're kind of transitioning that, um, especially when the library becomes its own department. And um, it's really not a library thing. And so, so we've transferred that over, as well as the Youth Commission um, will continue to be in Parks and Recreation. Uh, so those two things are happening. And um, I think that's it. Thank you very much for the time. All right, so I think we're going to hear from the uh, different folks here with their reports. Uh, Ron Ono, Admin Services Manager. Uh, what you have before you in the packet is a short report of, of the parks and facilities operation. Uh, first thing on the agenda, we have the Thornton Park tree planting Great news, uh, we just recently planted 100 trees at Centennial Park with volunteers. So as we remove trees, we look at ways to replant the trees. Uh, and so we'll be looking at Santiago uh, later. But uh, uh, people in trees were successful in getting an award for planting 140 trees at Thornton Park. Mm -hmm. I just had a meeting uh, with them today, and we were going over the soil testing of the site 
to make sure that whatever planting we do it accommodates uh, the soil accommodates and it helps the tree grow better uh, <clears throat> we uh, uh, they, they, are, they will be contacting the Thornton Park uh, Neighborhood Association as well as the school districts and they are required to complete the 140 planting before the end of the year, December. So just like Centennial, we'll be planting every other Saturday with a group of probably 15 people planting around 15 trees each Saturday and try to complete by the end of the year. So you're all welcome to attend. Uh, and we'll let you know when those dates are. And Ron, are they trying to plant trees that will be a little hardier perhaps and resist the disease and the bugs more? Yeah, in fact, um, when we selected these trees, we actually walked uh, Thornton Park. Th Thornton Park, uh, I'm not sure if you know it or not, but it um, used to be a swamp uh, marsh area. So wow. the underlining is all peat. It's got a high water table. And what the city did years ago, uh, filled it up with street rubble, basically asphalt, concrete, there's some broken car bodies in there, there's dirt from excavations from various uh, construction areas to actually fill that marsh area up to create the park site. At that time they were doing it, they weren't thinking of creating a park, they were just trying to fill up the area. So that's becoming a problem as we start planting the tree. Uh, I don't know if you noticed or not, as the trees that we first planted were stunted. Uh, they, they, are, they took a long time to develop uh, uh, to the size they are now. Uh, and then we've noticed that some of the trees are dying, not only because of the, the deep soil condition, but also the diseases that's happening throughout the city. So that's why we want to do the testing. Uh, we're selecting trees that uh, are not prone to the current disease. Uh, we walked the site, we looked at what trees are surviving, and we selected those trees to help uh, replant at, uh, at Thornton Park. Are these fungal diseases, or what sort of diseases are it's they? A, it's a shot hole, they call it shot hole bore disease. It's affecting the eucalyptus, the sycamore, uh, the, some of the willow trees. Um, uh, but they haven't affected the pine trees. A lot of the trees that we selected for Thornton Park are pine trees uh, of various a species, uh, so hopefully they'll they'll survive and we'll have a good forest out there. That's great. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, the other item I, I've already touched on tree removal. We we completed removing 319 trees. We have some money left over from that that uh, funding source, so we're going back and removing all the dead frond from the palm trees uh, that hasn't been pruned for years. Uh, and it's a liability issue for us. So we're, we're blitzing all the parks, taking out all the, skinning all the palms and, and taking out the fronds and the dates and the fruits and everything else. And then whatever is left over from that task, uh, we will use to continue with our tree survey and survey additional trees. And with the budget being approved next year, which is about what, a week away, we'll have additional money to start doing the tree removal and, and surveys. Uh, the other project I have here is Thornton Park parking lot. Uh, we actually talked to the the current league that's playing at Thornton Park. Uh, I think it's fast. Uh, uh, it's the travel ball team, anyway. Um, and we found a window in which they're not using the park site. So, the, and that window is between uh, between July fifteenth and August the third. So we planned our project so that. Uh, we will actually uh, remove the asphalt and replace the asphalt during that window uh, when they're, where they're not using the field. Uh, Crown Castle, um, great situation. Again, a group of volunteers, about 90 volunteers, came and helped uh, Blitz um, Memorial Park. They actually painted ble bleachers, replanted flowers, painted the uh, shower and locker room area in the pool. It was a great successful project. Uh, we wish they will continue coming back and we'll do more volunteer programs similar to that. Uh, on the lift station at the Civic Center, we received five bids. And w what that is, uh, if you don't know it, there's two lift stations in the Civic Center, one on um, Santa Ana Boulevard side in the lower parking lot 
and the one, uh, the other one on Flower Street, they both drain the lower level parking lot in the Civic Center. If they're not operating, that whole parking lot will fill with water under heavy rain. So those two lift stations are very, very critical. Uh, we've we've uh, repaired them and band-aid them to a point that it's it's a, to, it's a point that we now we need to completely remove everything and put in brand new pumps, and that's what this project is doing. And the project will also include uh, a, a a warning device that in case the pit fills up with water and the pump doesn't kick on, it'll send a, a message to a staff person to say, hey, you need to get out here and fix this problem. So we'll have a warning device to, to do that. Uh, the other item uh, is uh, in the Civic Center is the ADA ramp. I don't know if you notice that when you went to council meetings, we've been under construction with a new ramp uh, on the south side of the council chambers and also in the lower level uh, uh, patio here. That will provide ADA access. Do you have a picture of that, by the way? You didn't put it on? Oh. That will provide ADA access from the city hall parking structure to the council chambers and then from the library parking structure also to the council chambers. And it will provide the public access through the city hall area and, and the Civic Center Mall. Uh, and the, and let's see, the other item, you just talked about Six and Lacey. Thank you for renaming it Mariposa Park, just so that you know, Six and Lacey. We always do this. We always pick a construction name first, Six and Lacey, and, 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 and waiting to, till the city council renames it. So it's, you'll, see, you'll see that uh, McFadden and Standard is another one. It's a construction name. So you'll see something come through, renaming that park, and there's various parks similar to that. Um, the Center Street Urban Greening Project, uh, you asked me to talk a little bit about that. Uh, that project uh, is at Jerome Park. Uh, I wish I had a map I could show you, but uh, there's a street, Center Street, that divides the two ball diamonds, uh, actually four ball diamonds, two on the west side, two on the east side. And, and we actually, uh, years ago, we actually closed that street because it became a hazard of kids crossing the street, going to the concession stand, doing the games. So we actually, years ago, requested the city council to abandon that street, and we, and we blocked it. We had barricades there. We tried various times for grants, and we were successful in getting an urban greening grant just about a couple of years ago. The plans are, are all done. We went out to bid. We have a contractor, and uh, we're ready to award that on July the 16th. And what that will do is we'll rip out all the asphalt between the two ball diamonds, put in a bio swale, landscaping, a good, uh, yeah, so. Put your cursor in between her, so they know the street. So you see the center street dividing the ball diamonds. Mm -hmm. We're actually gonna take that street out, uh, a portion of it, and re-landscape it from basically from, from the uh, community center all the way down to the parking lot at the senior center. Uh, the other item I have here, I wish we had the concept plan. You could have seen the concept plan, but maybe next time we'll share it. We we'll share it with you. Yeah, uh, the, the pool resurfacing project. We were on a fast track to renovate three of the pools, uh, resurface it, and one of the pools we actually had to do a deck. Uh, was awarded on March the fifth. We were able, we we were able to complete it on schedule to open the pools on the summer season. We have monies budgeted next year to resurface the other two remaining pools. We've got five pools in the city of Santa Ana, so next year we'll resurface those other, other pools. Um, Proposition six, uh, 68 grant, we've had, uh, we looked at three projects, uh, one at uh, Standard and McFadden, another one at um, uh, Raid and Myrtle, and another one at uh, Memorial Park. We've had five community outreach meetings on each of those sites. So there's 15 meetings that staff went to to get input from the community on what they'd like, how do you like to see these parks designed. Uh, we've got that input, we did a conceptual plan, and now we're ready to submit an application for grant. Uh, the grant is, is uh, due August the 5th, uh, and uh, we're frantically 
putting together the, the information that's needed for that grant application. Uh, in, ad in addition to that, uh, as, as uh, Lisa mentioned, um, the French Park, uh, we quickly put together a concept conceptual plan on that. Uh, actually, that thing kind of developed over, the, uh, over a week's time or two weeks' time. We met with the community. They gave us uh, information on what they'd like to see it at uh, French Park. It's a little triangle. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, they, they did a charrette. They gave us information. Uh, we, I took it back to the office. We had it, uh, a conceptual plan designed, identified on the charrette items what we can do uh, real quick, what items is the long-term uh, improvement. Uh, the concept plan is done. We, we still need to share it with the community. But in the meantime, we'll move forward and I apply for the grant. The grant is due this Friday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's how quick we turned around that wow. request. Yeah. <laughs> um, the uh, security camera installation, as you know, we completed the security cameras at um, Madison Park. That's all completed with a code blue pole. Uh, Windsor Park, we ran into a little problem with the uh, antennas. We, we're working that thing out now. In fact, the antennas, we're going to re ricochet the, the signal from Windsor to Centennial to City Hall. So the antenna at Centennial has already been installed, and so they're in the process of completing that application. In the meantime, uh, as we were waiting for that to be done, uh, they, they went out to Chappers Park uh, this week, and then uh, they're installing uh, the, uh, the, what do you call that, uh, server, server uh, in that park site, and as well as the cameras, and hopefully they'll complete that uh, by, the, by the end of uh, June. Uh, at the same time, Santa Anita Park, they haven't gone there yet, but they are planning on going there and completing that project by the, by the end of July. I said June, I meant July, end of July. Um, and Memorial Park, similar situation. They're planning on completing that by August, and then Jerome in, in September. And that's the end of my report. If there's anything else that you'd like to hear about, I'd gladly give you additional information. Thank you, Ron. Um, what we'll do next meeting is once the budget is passed, um, we will bring to you, we'll forego all of our reports and we'll go through the budget, what was passed for us. So the operating budget and the CIP. So we'll give you pictures of all the CIP projects and we'll, um, and then we'll take a tour of them also. That sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Before we move to another item, I don't know if it's a time, but I'd like to bring up to on the board, um, I've been asking for quite some time the opportunity to have a park. And um, it's about four neighborhoods. They have no green space whatsoever. Uh, from first all the way uh, to Warner is uh, Piccolo, uh, Mid City, Central City. So looking forward to see if you guys will be interested in looking for funds as for many years we don't have a green space. The only one that we have is on on the side of Bristol and is not considered um, a park. So looking forward to see now that they have uh, approved the budget, looking forward to um, see if there's any funding possible to buy land and build a park, it would be great. Thank you. Jeannie, mm -hmm. are you next? Yes, good evening. Um, I'm gonna try to be brief here. Uh, but a lot of exciting things happening in the recreation. Um, the first item was that the Southwest Senior Center um, celebrated Father's Day on June the 24th. I mean, 21st, sorry about that. <laughs> and over 200 seniors attended, not just the fathers, but, um, you know, the whole family. Um, it's a great day to honor, uh, um, you know, fathers. And we were able to secure a sponsor for entertainment, which was um, um, Amistad Medical Clinic. Um, you know, we really appreciate that. Uh, they had a lot of fun. We made it special for them. So special that if you have ever been to Southwest or to Santa Ana Senior Center, one of the joys of the day for the, for the males mm -hmm. that attend is p playing pool. <laughs> so it was combination of Father's Day celebration and Billiards Tournament. It is 
very serious. When, and just real quick, Lisa, I'm sorry, a real quick story. I used to be stationed there for about four or five years, um, a couple of years back, and um, there was a lot of instances that I had to be kind of like the billiards uh, mediator, that type of deal. Um, so just uh, letting you know, it's a serious business, and um, they enjoy it, you know, but we want our seniors to be active, and this is one of the items that the males love to do. Uh, let's move on. Aquatics, as you heard, we were able to open our pools on time thanks to Park Services and all their efforts and also to recreation staff to getting all the uh, um, employees on board. HR, everybody takes a team to to get everybody on board. Uh, the season, start, season started off very well. As you know, though, at the beginning, it's been gloomy, right? And that happened when we started as well. So little by little, the numbers have increased, and I, I foresee that it's getting hotter. It's going to be very full. But um, the community enjoys it. It's a dollar for children, two dollars for adult, and uh, we're in full operations at all five uh, pools. Uh, Tuesday through Sunday, with, uh, as a reminder, Monday is a day of um, maintenance. Uh, the next item is, well, we also have swim lessons, and you can look at that up with Blu-ray as well. Um, the next item is after school adventures ended uh, for the year. On Friday, May the 24th, we had 130 registered participants at the different centers. What that is, is after school, they enjoy an after school uh, program that's physical fitness, a little bit of homework help, uh, but overall is for wellness for the children after school. Um, Number three, senior mobility program, as you're aware, um, we do have that, and they had a, a, an excursion, a free excursion to downtown um, Huntington Beach, and they enjoyed the day on May 17th from 10 to 4, um, you know, looking in the surrounding areas, having lunch, etc. and and uh, thanks to OCTA grant, that was successful. Gross basketball, uh, youth sports basketball program held its annual team day um, uh, Pitcher Day on May the 11th at Jerome Park. Um, you can read uh, the rest on that at your leisure. Um, but one more item is that we offered a clinic for 80 girls in the girls basketball program to, um, in part of due to the Los Angeles Parks. We have a great collaboration with them. As a matter of fact, today Lisa approved. Uh, we just got the phone call today. They will be sponsoring uh, I believe it was two, 200 spots for uh, youth sports participants that are registered in our program for this Sunday's game. They actually also are sending two buses to pick them up. So that is great. All we have to do is send the staff with them, and they're on their way. Uh, community Gardens, um, uh, the Wellness Education Program uh, hosted a um, workshop on June the uh, 19th for the Tisa Pilar Neighbor Association at El Salvador Park. And uh, there's an update for the second portion of this. Um, it says KidWorks will be having a service day at El Salvador Park June 26th. Actually, it has changed to tomorrow. Uh, they'll have uh, many children from the program um, be at the site and um, get some educational knowledge from our experts with our garden program and have a fun time there. Uh, camps, we had a successful camp uh, to Camp Big Bear. Uh, it's our annual camp out for the youth um, uh, here in the community, and they had a lot of fun. Most of the children uh, that attend uh, never had a camp out experience. So you hear the stories from staff, from those that attended, wow, you know, we saw the mountains, you know, wow, we saw the lake. Uh, first time, you know, they've been away from home. They made a long, uh, you know, they made a lot of memories with new friends. Uh, sometimes, you know, at the beginning they get there and, you know, it's a little transition. They talk, you oh, know, I want to go home. But towards the end, they don't want to come back. <laughs> so that was a few days for them. That was uh, Monday through Friday, the youth. And then Saturday, Sunday, it was the Family Pride uh, Club that attended with families uh, close to 200 and very successful. Um, the next one is um, Summer Day Camp. That started as uh, After School Adventures ended. Summer Day Camp is an all-day day camp at our rec centers uh, where children enjoy a variety of things, including excursions, including um, scientific things that they do with the children, fitness, sports, special events, you name it, they have fun from 
June the 3rd to August the 9th. That's for the typical centers. And I say that because, for example, Santa Anita, and you know um, that they are under the school district of Garden Grove. So it, it starts a little, uh, one week later. So we're in full force with that. People are having fun. We also provide a lunch every day, Monday through Friday, for this program, uh, due in part with the school district's partnership. So we have that as well. And it's not just for the children that attend this program. For example, Jerome Park, um, everybody in the community is welcome, any of these sites that have free lunch. And so typically you get anywhere from the different sites from 50 to about close to 200 people that receive lunch on a daily basis. So it's great. Uh, the next item is rookie ball baseball. Um, it's underway, registration starting. It's used in the uh, pre-K through eighth graders. And uh, it's July 1st through August the 31st. If you know of any uh, children that could participate, please let them know. It's about $37 and some change. Uh, but we do offer scholarships. So re please remember to let them know we do offer scholarships for that. And I'll let you read on your leisure more about that. Workshops, uh, we had currently on May the 20th a nutrition workshop uh, hosted by America on Track at Birch Park for seniors. And it was well in, uh, well attended. They learned a lot. And, you know, we always want to uh, educate our youth and our seniors that I always talk about. And so this is one of the uh, positive items that they learned about uh, fruits, vegetables, grains, protein, and dairy, etc. What's a well-balanced meal? You know, because sometimes, not just the we all forget, right? Oh, yeah, let me get the broccoli, but then you get a tortilla. I don't, you know. So we all have to educate each other with that. Picnic at the park. Uh, Birch Park held on Friday, May the 24th, in honor of Memorial Day. Uh, picnic at the park for the seniors. It was awesome. They saluted the flag in commemoration of our fallen heroes, etc. And uh, they just had a good time. And it was sponsored by the Volunteer um, Senior Club at the center. Next page, I will not read the whole thing to you, but basically you know that every month I give, or yes, every month I give a report on our facility rentals and permits. And I'm glad to report that we had over 20, uh, 2,431, which was an increase of 332 rentals as of April. In May, we didn't, I didn't have this report. I, I think you recall I made a presentation on the 4th of July. So it's been an uh, increase every month that I've been giving this report to you all. And uh, lastly, that's not in the report, you have copies of the 4th of July flyer that's coming up next Thursday on the holiday at Centennial Park. And I know Edema is ready to dance. <laughs> we have the Chico Band lined up, uh, and it's an awesome band for the entire family and community. And at 9 p.m. is the finale with the 20-minute fireworks. And uh, that's a safe one that we have in our city. And uh, please encourage folks to come out. It's a great way to have a good time in the fresh outdoors. It's not going to be too hot like other years. Perfect weather. Uh, we have the pleasure of having Mr. Bill Sandoval uh, be the, the host, the MC for the evening. We will be honoring our veterans. Uh, we have a speaker already in place. Um, it's a good time, and as a reminder for those, maybe, maybe those that haven't attended, we have areas for children, and it's free. We have areas for the public to learn about our nation's history. Uh, we have food vendors, um, and uh, but the biggest one is the recognition of our veterans. If you know of any veterans uh, that live in your neighborhoods, tell them to come out, come out, check in with one of the staff, so we know that they're there. And then I won't say the rest, but just have them check in with one of the staff, okay? If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'm done. Thank you so much. And last but not least, Ethan. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Um, I have the report broken up into a few different sections representing different areas of the zoo. Um, the first one is animal services. So those are the staff that take care of all of the animals at the zoo and their habitats. Um, and then also veterinary services. So one thing, we were able to purchase a, a new ultrasound unit at the zoo this fiscal year, which was an unexpected surprise for us. Um, and we've already used it and, and we're able to use that on some of the animals and see if they're, they're pregnant, if we're suspecting that, or if they're having a medical condition or some issue. Um, so it's, very, it's the size of a laptop computer. Um, so that's very helpful to us. Um, we also uh, worked with the animal training consultant. She came from another zoo 
and she was working with the keepers a bit on how they train the animals for different husbandry tasks and then also so for some veterinary procedures so we can uh, like one of the primates they're working on training him to take injections um, which will help with his health care and so things like that if you can work with the animals it makes your life easier too and it's less stressful for the animals so we're working on that um, we had an inspection by the California Department of Public Health um, they come out every few years to inspect our radiology equipment. We have an x-ray unit at the zoo, which is part of the vet hospital, and they come to inspect that to make sure we're not having radiation going off. It's, it's safely contained in the building with the appropriate measures, so that came through fine. Um, in the education department, the education staff are very active doing lots of programs for the community. Um, they continue to do their weekend animal presentations, which are free to the public visiting the zoo. Um, we finished the this, this, this year's uh, school visits um, because the school year wrapped up. And we had 112 on-site programs. Um, so those are classes visiting the zoo for field trips. Um, and then we also had additional large thousands of people that came as self-guided visits. So they were schools also coming to the zoo, but they weren't going through a guided program. Um, in total, we had over 30,000 people come to the zoo for field trips this year. Uh, zoo camp has started. We're in our second week right now, and that's a partnership with Discovery Cube. And there's two different age groups. There's one that's kindergarten, uh, preschool age, and then there's another camp that's for third and fourth, um, so a little bit older kids. They do activities throughout the zoo. They meet a lot of animals. They do labs. Um, they learn about obser observations of animals. And then at the end, they get to present all these things to their parents when they come on the last day. Um, so they have a great time. Uh, probably one of their favorite things is they get to meet the camels and then feed them carrots and apples. So, and they get pictures of that. Um, outreach, one, one project we work on with the education department is Project Wild. And that's an outreach program we do for, for local teachers uh, that so they can learn more techniques for informal um, science education and how they can bring that into their classroom. And then we also use those Project Wild um, curriculum in, in our programs at the zoo. So when we do special events, we'll often take crafts from Project Wild. But the education specialist at the zoo is the coordinator of that. So she also works with other schools. Safety trainings are something that we try to do pretty regularly at the zoo. Um, it's coming up to summertime, and we just had a heat safety drill. We had someone, a staff person, that was unconscious, um, and the staff had to attend to them. They had to call the paramedics. And then we reviewed what you do and how you take care of yourself through the, the warm summer months as you're working outdoors to make sure you're hydrated and you're taking breaks and, and getting in the shade if you need to. Um, as far as events went, on May 19th, we hosted Party for the Planet. That was a great event at the zoo where we sort of, it's sort of like an Earth Day event, but after Earth Day, because Earth Day is in April, and had many different groups from the community come out to the event and talk about what they do in the um, and then also give out information um, for, for the residents to take home with them. Um, there was one group associated with uh, Southern California Edison, which is where you can in, uh, use more energy efficient appliances. The waste management was there with a the little spinny wheel giving out things, um, even the miniature trash truck. That was fun. Um, <laughs> everyone likes to get in that. Um, on June 8th, we celebrated World Oceans Day at the zoo so we had a it's a it's a fairly small event we set up some craft stations on the lawn and have different education artifacts that people can interact with and volunteers work at those stations so that happened on june 8th on june 22nd so that was last saturday we host an event called dream night that's an event we do every year where we invite families um, and the kids that have life-threatening illnesses to come to the zoo and have some private time at the zoo meet some animals they have a catered meal and and they can do different activities um, it's not not an event that we actively promote we don't promote it on social media, but it's something that happens every year. And that was originally started by a zoo in the Netherlands about 
15 or 20 years ago by the zookeepers. So it's just a, a lot of zoos do that event. Um, so that was very nice. And then on June 22nd and 23rd, so this past weekend, we had Del Oro Model Railroad set up at the zoo. They have a, a small scale railroad that they bring out on the lawn and they come every year and the kids have fun controlling the trains and, um, and then seeing all the little dioramas that they put out. Um, we also had um, Explorer Academy from Long Beach come out to the zoo. The, so those were high school students and they did some activities and created some uh, enrichment for the animals. So th some uh, things for the animals to interact with. As far as attendance, um, I have the information there for April and May. Um, pretty constant. This year was a little bit rough for us because we had so much rain, which meant some closure days. Um, some repairs going on. The zoo's exhibit with the big waterfall, Amazon's Edge, we had to drain that recently, which was a pretty pretty big task. Um, it hadn't been drained in about eight years, and the whole bottom of the exhibit pool was full of muck that was about 18 inches thick. Uh, so we had a volunteer group, California Conservation Corps. They came out and helped us. Unfortunately, they left at 2 o'clock, and it wasn't done. So, so that's where the staff got their, their hands dirty. Um, I was out there with them. And it was, it was quite a project, but it got done, and the pool looks a lot better now. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> uh, we had some Eagle Scouts. We have some Eagle Scouts in the pipeline coming up doing projects. We had one scout that just completed a project, uh, Remy. Uh, he built some roof structures over some of the animal habitats. We also had some volunteer days. Uh, we worked with U.S. Bank. They come out once or twice a year, and they have fun at the zoo, helping with all sorts of things. We've certainly come up with some interesting projects for them over the last few years. But a, a lot of it is removing weeds, moving soil, planting trees, all things like that. Uh, uh, related to the Friends of Santa Ana Zoo, this uh, nonprofit partner, um, on June 2nd, they had a membership appreciation day. They tried something different this year where we had free rides for all the members. Uh, 65 families joined that day because they really wanted the free rides. <laughs> uh, um, we used to we used to do something where the Aquarium of the Pacific brought out their they have a tide pool truck that you can go and see the, the little critters. Uh, it got rained out this year, so that's why we circled back and tried something different with the free ride day and, and a little membership lounge, and that worked really well. So we'll probably do that again. Um, the friends of the zoo were successful in getting a, a relief grant. So like Thornton Park, will be able to plant some more trees at the zoo. Um, and then this weekend is the first sunset at the zoo on, on June 30th from 5 to 7.30. We have, um, we have three sunsets coming up, this one in June and then two in July. We have a live band at each of the sunsets. Uh, I don't remember which band this one is. There's an 80s band. There's a... Um, country band and then there's a blues band I believe um, but the live music you can bring a picnic have, have food on the lawn um, there it is an extra there is an extra charge for that it's a fundraiser um, all the all the funds will go back into zoo projects in the future but that's a great event and that's coming up this weekend so thank you did you want to mention something about the Zufari or did you already? Sure, I, I actually didn't have it in here. Um, so you have some invitations for Zufari. That's that's the um, largest fundraiser event, fundraising event that we do at the zoo. Um, it happens in August of every year, and it uh, it's a little bit different than the other events that we do. It's it's a more of a formal event. It has a sit down dinner, um, and there's a live auction and a silent auction. Um, and typically it generates about $100,000 in, in donations to go towards the, the zoo. So it's a great event. I think this is the 26th year um, that we've, we've done this event. Thank you, Ethan. You're welcome.
All right, I think we're at the end, huh? Yep, absolutely. Um, the library report you have in, in your uh, packet, and uh, Yolanda Marino is the interim library director. Um, she is a retiree. She's come back to um, help us out in the library. We're recruiting for a library director, and uh, we'll keep you posted on that. She just couldn't be here tonight, uh, but she'll be here next time. So thank you. Thank you. So I think we're at the uh, juncture now for board member comments. So I would entertain uh, comments from the board at this time. Irma Macias, Citywide. I just want to thank everyone for everything, uh, Mr. Ono. I mean, uh, all the hard work with all those planting the trees and bringing the, these programs back, I think it is essential. Um, as we're uh, having a lot of trees dying, I'm glad to hear that they are replacing them and uh, looking forward to continue working. And for you, young man on the zoo, I mean, uh, amazing things are happening, and I'm looking forward to continue uh, working and volunteering in about the 4th of July. Everyone, please show up. It is an amazing uh, show. I just wish the whole city will be attending as um, every year is getting worse into our neighborhoods, especially the central part of Santa Ana. So um, distribute these flyers at schools. Even though they are closed, they can put it in the marquees. And uh, I think working with the district, um, it is it is uh, a benefit for the community. Um, it is a war zone. Last year, we have a lot of um, and regretful events with the police department and the fire department. So hopefully, um, the city can put this in the in the marquee. San Ana College, the same thing. And uh, looking forward for a safer Fourth of July. Wishing you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from anyone? Commissioner Diaz, um, thank you uh, for all the reports. I had a question um, around the vacancies that are um, wondering how they're so maybe I could help is there something that I could do to get someone to apply or to um, which is the student representative and the Santa Ana Unified so I just wanted to get a little bit of information about that yeah I don't um it's, and it says vacant so just to verify that, that is, there's right right now we are so there's just one one vacant position we have here. I don't have we ever had someone in this position that you all recall that have been here a while? We have. It's been quite a long time since we've had a student representative. Um, I've been here in the city now for about five years, and I can't remember having a student representative um, in, in that time. Um, I think that in the next uh, couple of months or so, I think that there's some some things that will be kind of uh, ch not changing, but so much updating our our uh, board. And I think that um, as they become available, you guys will be privy to that. Um, but it's been quite some time since we kind of had those representatives on that. Yeah, and we are um, updating the municipal code with the city attorney's office. So we're updating the Board of Recreation and Parks. Um, and because you have those shirts that say board member, uh, I'm changing the name <laughs> to a commission, a Parks, Recreation, and Community Services Commission is what we're proposing. It's okay. We get you new shirts. But um, also, um, like the, uh, it's just really outdated. So we're updating those. And as, um, as well, the Youth Commission. There's adults on the Youth Commission. It doesn't make sense. So we want to bring make the Youth Commission a Youth Commission. And perhaps um, this student representative position could go away because we'll ha we have a Youth Commission. So so we, we can look at this. Thank you. Uh, on the same topic, um I see that there are some board members that don't attend regularly. How many meetings you have to be missing to be removed and fill out that position? Uh, Word three, I have uh, some individuals um, questioning the attendance of uh, Word three. So I don't know how many meetings. I remember in the bylaws doing something, but I, I'm not sure about it. Would you please? 
Thank you, uh, Commissioner Macias. Uh, there is um, a cap on that, and uh, what we'll do is um, I'll sit down with uh, Lisa to discuss that, and then see what we go from that uh, point. Thank you, and and uh, Commissioner Macias, we're also looking at our bylaws. We're going to be redoing bylaws for the Youth Commission, the Board of Recreation and Parks, uh, so we can identify. We'll work through that process. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any other board comments tonight? Seeing none, at this point, I would ask for a motion uh, to adjourn the meeting. Motion to adjourn the meeting. Do we have a second? second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a good night. <laughs> Thank you for coaching me.